Well, he used to get into arguments with people about government. And there we had some amicus. Maybe we have some amicus here tonight. I don't know. And he maintained that the government was necessary to prevent and to, to ensure social cooperation, to protect life and property so that people could trade, could exchange goods, and could live free, that you had to have that minimum government, a night watchman state. The night watchman was state was necessary so people could live their own lives. And people would try to press him and say, you should, the government shouldn't tax, we should have voluntary contributions. He says, then you'll start having wars. And when pre really pressed, he would say, go and write it in a book. He felt that writing it down in a book would help you to understand. Now, you, uh, you asked about Rothbard. He thought Rothbard was brilliant, and Rothbard is brilliant. He couldn't understand how a man as brilliant and as bright as Murray Rothbard could be an anarchist. He once asked my husband to debate Murray Rothbard on the subject of anarchy, but an uh, Rothbard's a s slippery debater. He doesn't debate. He name calls. He just wouldn't debate the issue. Are you folks Rothbardian fans? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, Rothbard's, uh, I, I wrote an article for the Senholz Festry. Did any of you read that, Roger? Or anybody? I said that Rothbard was like a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. He's a Dr. Jekyll in that he's brilliant. He's a Mr. Hyde in that he's vicious and vitriolic at times. There are just two sides to him. He he writes brilliant economics, and then he turns around and is just vitriolic. I enjoy reading him, but uh, so far I haven't been a butt of any of his criticism. I don't know what I'd say if he... I, I, I'm an insignificant sort of person. <laughs> I'm not important enough to attack.